social media has created competition mm -hmm. between us, you know, between us women in general. Makeup trends change really quickly. I, I mean, every month on TikTok you see something new. Someone comes in and says, I want these these big lips, these Kim Kardashian lips. We get sagging, we get loss of fat pads, we get bone resorption. So these technicians do exist, even locally, that the clients end up like with, with a massive inflamed eyes. <sighs> Welcome to The She Word, conversations that women rarely have, but really should. And I'm your host, Trudy Kerr. Before we get going, I'm going to give you a gentle reminder. Under here somewhere is a subscribe button. Make sure that you hit that because coming up in the next months, uh, we have some incredible shows lined up for you. Not just this main series of The She Word, but so, so much more. So make sure you hit subscribe and of course, follow and like us as well. If you are watching this on the Patreon page, well, a special welcome and thank you to you because you're watching this before anybody else. And of course, as a subscriber, not only do you get early access to every show, but you also get exclusive content. You also get special offers. You get invited to our live events when they happen and so much more. But more importantly than that, 50% of every Patreon subscription goes towards the Richmond Foundation to provide help and care for women who want therapy and guidance but can't afford it. So a huge thank you and welcome to you. So now to our show. Women and beauty is an issue that's faced our gender and men, but we're talking about our gender, for millennia. I would say that every woman cares about how she looks and how she is perceived. And contrary to popular belief, this issue does not go away as you age. In fact, with age comes new physical challenges and women are now seeking new methods of stemming the effects of time for young women who've grown up with the age of social media that have never lived without it, the pressures of meeting unobtainable standards reflected on social media are insane. So this show is all about women and beauty. And I am talking to three women from the beauty industry about reframing our expectations and what we can do to help ourselves. Deborah. Debs, I'm so glad that after 18 months, I've finally gotten you on a show. Thank Your you. partner, Nikki, was on the show Body Modification. You're a doctor who has specialized in aesthetic medicine, and you and your partner own Skin and Us, offering a range of beauty-related services, which I'm going to ask you about in just a moment. But thank you for finally giving in after <laughs> I've harassed you for so long and coming on the show. Thank you. Dorian Catania, hello. hello Welcome to you. You're the founder of Ayurveda, which is known right across the Maltese islands. It's beauty treatments. Ayurveda also uh, offers the relatively recent phenomenon of lash extensions, as well as nails, eyebrows, threadings, and other popular treatments that we will come to again in a second. I want to find out more about you. And Rowana Gatt is joining us from Lucy Makeup. Now, makeup is nothing new. In fact, it's been around for, again, millennia. But the trends relating to makeup are always changing. So I'm really glad that you're here and thank you for joining us. Yeah. And I'm going to come to you in a second again. But coming back to you, Debs, I'm going to call you Debs because I sure. do feel sure. like you've poked my face enough times for <laughs> me to be able to do that. Um, tell me a little bit about your backstory because Nikki is also a doctor mm -hmm. and moved into the aesthetics profession and kind of went into the detail, but explain from your point of view, how did you get into this a little bit of your backstory? So um, Nikki and I knew each other from medical school and we met, we used to work together. Initially, we just used to do laser hair removal. We started with something very small and then we got talking and we thought, you know, why not open something just for us, a small company. And we got together, we got our minds together and we opened a small company, which now is doing quite well. <laughs> I like the way you went, it's doing quite well. <laughs> but predominantly, what would you do? You're still doing we, laser removal? We, we do laser hair removal, but then we do metastatic. So we do Botox, fillers, peels, uh, microcellular therapy, 
a bit of everything, sort of, when it comes to beauty. And you've obviously seen a huge increase in in consumers, in customers are coming to you. Yes, of all ages, I have to say. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to finding out more about that because that's quite exciting and certainly part of our conversation today. Uh, Dorian, tell me more about you because you have Ayurveda, which I think most people have heard of. Yeah, so by profession, I'm, I'm a beauty therapist and I opened the first salon 15 years ago. And um, we have seen an increase, a, a demand, an increase for specific services over the years changing. So at first it was a boom of eyebrows. Now, that, according to the trends, according to what social media, according to what, what the clients are asking for, we cater for their demands as per their needs, basically, because everything has to be customized, right? Right. Oh, looking forward to talking to you about <laughs> trends. You jumped straight into the show there. And of course, Ruana, tell me a little bit about you, because you're the youngest lady at the table. Yes. You're very beautiful, and I'm so oh, glad that you. you're here with us. But what's your background? So since I was little, I always loved makeup. Like I remember myself um, drawing my my face, my mom's face, <laughs> with makeup, and I used to like grab the the pouch, a makeup pouch of my mother, and like uh, put put on makeup since I was small. But um, nowadays, um, I started um, marketing as well. So I love marketing, but. Um, with uh, with marketing and uh, love for makeup, now I'm here. <laughs> I'm working with Lucy and uh, presenting the marketing team. And Sounds like a dream come true. Yes, that's <laughs> yes, amazing. <laughs> yes, that's what I told them outside when we were waiting. That's fantastic, yes. and of course, you would be also very, very uh, on the ball when it comes to trends and what's what's trending yes, at the moment. Yes, so you I'm have to be very careful, um, like what's trending out there, um, TikTok, uh, Instagram. Oh, <laughs> looking forward to finding out about that as well. But I'm going to throw some facts across the table first before we get into the questions. Cosmetics Europe, the Personal Care Association, issued its latest market performance report, noting that European cosmetics market was worth... 88 billion oh euros at retail sales in 2022, that's only last year, making Europe and the USA the largest cosmetic markets in the world. 88 billion, I mean, it's massive. Botox is undoubtedly the number one non-evasive procedure in 2022. Over 7.4 million people in the US alone are receiving Botox treatments. And globally, the Botox market is worth about 4.4 billion dollars. I love saying that, billion. <laughs> Makeup, uh, lip makeup was the fastest growing segment across all beauty categories over the last year, including prestige outlets and mass merchants. Makeup usage is also on the rise. According to a recent report, makeup usage increased by 3% in the past year, and it surpassed pre-pandemic levels, which to me was really surprised me because, you know, as a kid, we loved makeup, but it's on the rise. So there's there's a you know a trend going on there already. So my first question is to all of you. Gin, women have always wanted to look good for as long as women have been on the planet. Generally speaking, in 2023, who are we aiming to look good for? I hope for ourselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I love your face there, Dorian's just like, you're so surprised you like, said that. To feel good, eh? But are we doing it for ourselves? Are we doing it for, uh, let me throw this out there, are we doing it for media? Are we doing it for our partners? Are we doing it for, if we're single, we're doing it for, for the opposite sex? You, you jumped in there and said we're doing it for ourselves. But surely there has to be a, an ultimatum or is it just so that we can look at it? I think, is it always for ourselves or for sometimes? My, I think um, myself, um, I don't feel like doing makeup, but if I'm going out, um, in a, going out in a restaurant, like I have to do makeup. I feel of like course, of I course. have to, but I feel like I have to sometimes because it's because 
there will be people seeing me. So there you go. That's what I'm coming to. So are we doing it for ourselves? Or are we doing it for everybody else? I'm, and I've got Deb's nodding me over there because we. What do you think? <laughs> I'd love to think that we do it for ourselves, but also I think social media has created competition mm -hmm. between us. You know, between us women in general. Because when we look at social media, we look at others sometimes, maybe through, through filters or through photo editing. But, you know, it creates an element of competition because you want to look good, like your friend, like yes, whoever, yeah. you know. So I think that that is also one of the reasons why you want to look good. We do it for ourselves. I agree with that. But also I think Partially. that there is a bit of competition go going around. You going to add anything, Dorian? Because <laughs> you jumped in there with that fantastic <laughs> face. Your opening statement was brilliant. <laughs> because... If, if you if you feel good, you're going to look good. So even if I'm going to work, I'm, go, I'm going to put makeup on because I want to feel good, not because I want my colleagues to see me looking good, but because I want to feel good, mm -hmm. because I need to inspire my team. So I do it for myself first and foremost. Then obviously it all comes with a different age group and different scenarios. But I think at my age, I realize that first and foremost, I need to do things for myself. And this includes looking good. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with I agree, yeah, with agree as well with her. But I think there's part of it um, that we are a bit we have like we have to do makeup so others will see us in a good state. <laughs> well, you're talking about makeup, and I'm going to ask in the context of that, I'm going to ask each of you because in each of your opening introductions, you mentioned trends one way or another so we've decided that you know maybe that we want to look good for ourselves hopefully we want to look good for ourselves but there is a tertiary level to that that we want to we're not going to go out to a restaurant I don't think anyone really wants to go out to a restaurant Looking. with not having makeup on unless it's McDonald's in which case <laughs> actually you don't want anyone to see you there exactly. sorry <laughs> oh lord gonna get sued for saying that um but I think we all want to look good, but I, I'm going to dig deeper. I'm going to start with that. And then by the time we come to the end of end of our conversation, I'm going to ask that question again, because I think that there is more to it. We've mentioned social media. You've mentioned peers, your work colleagues, and you've mentioned the people around you. None of us have mentioned our partners, <laughs> which is really interesting. Sure. Uh, and we're, so we'll, we'll come back to that question. But I want to touch on these trends because... And I'm going to start with you, Dorian, because you mentioned trends. You said about eyebrows. Uh, I can confess I'm that still baffles me, the whole eyebrow thing. Um, but one of the trends that, that came out in the last couple of years, I fully subscribe to, which is the lashes. So what, what is trending? What has trended? What is trending? And what made a difference to your business? Definitely, there was a massive rise when it comes to lash extensions. However, the looks have changed through the years. So, for example, if we have um, current trends at the moment, is more on the natural rather than the dramatic look. So if people were asking us for Russian volume and the mega volume, now it is more subtle, more natural. So obviously there are different trends that, that you feel that, that are there because the clients are asking for them. But okay, so when did lashes, this trend of lashes, when did it come in? Because I only know of it, of it sort of 2018, 2019? 2018, 19, I think it was the boom of lash extensions where everything wanted to wear, everyone wanted to wear massive lash extensions. Like if I'm going to have lash extensions, I want them to be seen. Whilst now I see that, that the demand is still there, however, it's more for a natural effect. Okay. Especially, especially from uh, people of my age or older. So we're more after um, different effects. So, for example, there was a time where it was the Kardashian K effect, where there was the doll effect, the, you know, so th there are always different, different um, trends that people ask for that you have to be a able to provide what they are asking for, basically, at the time that they want it. Because if I want this... Kim K look, I want it now, not tomorrow, but I want it now. Or the wet look effect of the eyelash extensions. There are many different kinds of lash extensions, not just lash extension. Wow. I'm obviously not in the beauty industry, <laughs> I can tell you that. It wouldn't take much to work that one out. But if that's the trend that came in at 2018 and then that, that trend has evolved, what else is trending at the moment? What else is, or, or what, pre, what was the predecessor for that? Definitely um, brow threading. Okay. Brow henna, 
Um, now we see a lot of brow lamination and lash lamination, which is like oh. styling of the eyebrows. Like when you do a straightening for the hair, but this time you do it for your brow, so they are flat. Yeah, yeah. And for the lashes, it's um, lash lamination, which basically curls and tints your natural your natural lashes without the need of la lash extension. So there's zero maintenance. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else that's trending at the moment? Well, definitely there are some uh, treatments going on when it comes to skincare, like different kind of facials, like now it's more of for the hydrating um, effect and the tightening effect, which never leaves, you know, everybody wants tighter skin and... Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you looked at Deb there. You're like, yeah. Okay, we're going to come back to, to, to that in a second. I'm going to come to you now, Rowana, because you were talking about trends and you were talking about makeup trends. As I said, makeup has been around forever. Yes. But what is, how, okay, let me ask you two questions. How frequently do makeup trends change or emerge? And what's trending at the moment? Because I see these these TikTok things with this and that and the other, and I'm just like, good grief, I don't have the time for that. But some people do. Yes, um, makeup trends change really quickly. I I mean, every month on TikTok you see something new. Every like you see a lot of trends happening, and um, can you give me an example? What's a what's a trend? A recent trend that you've seen. For example, it's a creative thing, this one. For example, now we, um, I just saw one uh, on TikTok and um, they do um, a napkin. Um, they, they dip it in, into makeup, into eyeshadow. And they, they do like this. And they, they put it on. And then the fine lines come through and they, they, uh, the design comes really creative. So you can see the fine lines? Yes. But it's Why would you it's do that? Come, it comes really nice. Okay. Okay. This is in young so, people. So, yeah. So makeup, it's a way to express yourself as well. To, okay. I mean, for some, for some of us, it's a way to express ourselves and to be creative. Of course. Yeah. Um, so if a trend is, if something is trending on TikTok, how seriously do you as a marketing manager, how seriously do you take that with regards to what you need to have in your store? So, so uh, it is very important to keep up with the trends because people will ask for those products. Yeah. So they'll go on TikTok and they'll see yes, napkins on your eye creases and come in and ask for that. For product. example, they, if 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 an, a, a colorful eyeshadow is it's and it's in, in vague. Oh, in vogue, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You you have like you have to provide colorful eyeshadow. For example, nowadays um, lip gloss is more in, is coming back. You, I didn't realize it never gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so off no, but right. but um, lately lip gloss um, it's coming very in Trendy. trend. Yes. Okay, I'm coming back to this for sure, for sure. What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works, in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles, and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. Debs, I'm going to ask you because you're kind of more involved in the long term trends because we, I'm, I'm assuming the napkin in the I love <laughs> I'm going to go and search for this on yes. TikTok. If, right now it's like getting viral. Wow. Not in our age group, I guess. No, because uh, we're all trying <laughs> to hide this, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to, sc I go to see because Debs to get rid of this. I don't want anyone putting a napkin on the, the corner of my eye. The thing with the end is uh, a person does it and it, it's, um, most of the people like Popular. it and it starts to grow. Spread. Okay, cool. Yes. So, but yours, but this might 
how long might a, tri- a, tra- a trend last? It's not going to last too long, no? No, when there's a like a trend like this one, it doesn't last. So give me, give me an like estimate. Two to three months, and then okay, all right, and then you're going to move less. It depends. Mm. So you might move on to to something new. So that yes. so we're talking about something that is. You come in, you get it, you do it, you go out yes. for, you know, three or four uh-huh. times and then you might not do it again. Mm-hmm. Okay. And with regards to lashes, that's trending, but there's not a longevity. You go back and get them done three weeks later. And, and, and if you decide that you don't want to have lashes, then you're probably looking at about six months before, or you can have them removed, but you might be looking at six but months. But you also can change the different style. So for example, if I'm wearing Russian volume now, next time I can have like less volume True. or a cat eye effect. But it will depend also because some some clients have expectations like I want this look, but then for example they do not have as many lashes to have that look. So coming to expectations in a minute as well. Before we get there, before we get to expectations, because you've hit on something that's really hot. (laughs) Before we get there, Deb's trends. Because I don't recall when I was young anybody having Botox or fillers or uh, any of the other treatments that you mention are these trend? I mean, you said that, that, that you started doing it and now they've become more popular. I'm assuming that these are, are trending right now or they have yes. been trending for a long time. No, I think in the last decade they have definitely increased um, in all age groups, I have to say. Um, for instance, nowadays, Botox is even, even 30 year olds asking for a Botox, which is not always, the, doesn't mean that I will always do it, you know, but the trend is that they do it as a preventive measure. Yes, which is so what Nikki, not, your partner, had said before. Uh, so as not to get uh, wrinkles, you know what I mean? And then it keeps on, the age groups, I mean, 40s and 50s are the commoner age groups, but we get asked for Botox in all age groups. And Botox is not only done on the upper face, it's also done on the lower face, it's done in the armpits, it's a means of... I'm reducing. sorry, on the armpits? Yes, it's a hyperhidrosis treatment, you know, for treatment against sweating. So Botox has... the first time. Mal- I'm uh, hearing this. <laughs> it has multiple uses, you know, and they're becoming commoner. You see, the trend increases every year. Wow. You know, so, yes, it's a good treatment. And it's, it makes you look, if done properly, it gives you a natural look and a rested look, you know. Let me ask you about fillers, though, because fillers, particularly lip fillers, I was having a conversation today with a young lady who said that she had never considered having lip fillers, but now she wants to go and get them done. This is trending? Definitely. I think it's one of the most popular fillers that uh, we're asked to do, you know, in all age groups, um, but especially the younger age groups, 20s, 30s and 40s. Um, yes, if done correctly and if done naturally, they give, the, they give a plumper appearance and they can be nice and natural, you know, but they have to be done by a professional. I always recommend because they can be risky, you know, they can be, it can be a dangerous filler if not done properly. So I always recommend a consultation, you know, and they should be done by a medical professional, because if done well, you'll have a good result. I'm really looking forward to asking you about uh, about when the, these things, when you treat young ladies who've obviously gone a little bit overboard, but we can t- tackle that in a minute because I want to come back to this, this idea of expectations. You were talking about expectations. Now, even with makeup, but I, partic- I think this particularly relates to you, both you ladies here, when a client comes to you, I'm quite sure that they have expectations. They it's walk a photo. In. <gasps> I want this. But isn't that the same as having a haircut? No, it's no. not the same. Oh, okay, okay. Tell me why. But definitely also when it comes to hair, we have different kinds of hair. Like if, if the photo, she has thick hair, I cannot have my non-voluminous hair looking like that. So yeah. it all depends on different factors, not just um, for everything. So why is it different from your going your expectations going to a hair salon to coming to you guys? What, what what are the expectations when people come to you? Very often they come with a picture, you know, you know, of perfect lips, perfect set of lips. Which I mean, you have to keep in mind your original shape. You know, if you have asymmetries, it's not always easy to get the lips 
as perfect as a picture, you know. This is what they see on social media. This yeah. is the pictures Sometimes they download. Sometimes pictures are edited as well. You know, they might be edited and <laughs> exactly. everybody wants the perfect pout and the perfect lips. But you have to keep in mind your own original lips. <laughs> Some people, if they have like very, very thin lips, you know, they have to be staged and yeah. done slowly. You can't walk out of the room with suddenly a set of very plumpy lips, you know what I mean? So Gradually, you have to keep yeah. that in mind and you have to explain to the clients and lower their expectations. Otherwise, they will never be happy. Even when it comes to brows, they want the arch here. But if your natural brows are here, how can I put the arch here? <laughs> what? Wow, why? Because <laughs> this, is what, what? So this is why we need to educate people. That we need to make the, the best of what we have. We need to work with what we have and enhance it. Yes, but Rowana just made a really good point. Social media has been telling us for mm -hmm. the last, what, five, ten years since since it's been around that, that we can achieve anything. Is this where it's coming from? Is people coming in? I mean, I can remember going in to get my hair cut when I was in my, I don't know, late teens and going, I want to look like this, and my hairdresser going, pff, pff, don't be ridiculous. But we now have expectations from social media that we can think, all be yeah. all things. I think we are being influenced from from these kind of pictures. Um, and we want like, um, even if, for example, we see a, a, an influencer, for example, and she has like big lips, uh, she looks perfect. She always looks perfect on social media. Um, people w um, want to look like her, for example. Yeah, of course. I mean, take Kim Kardashian. I mean, in and case. that's why then they they go with the picture like, I want, you know, they they show it to her and they want to to do something similar to them. So, because but, for them that is beautiful. Yeah, and that is what they visualize yes. as beauty, and they want to to relate and they want to look like that person. So, do you, how do you manage your clients' expectations when you say actually that's not going to happen? Well, definitely, it's very important to break it down and to educate them and to be real with them because be otherwise, honest. otherwise uh, you never make them happy. Yes, but what if a client turns around to you and says, "I'm sorry, but that's what I want," and they turn around and leave? Are you not worried that they're going to leave? No, 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 not at no. All. We're doing our job as professionals. We are educating our clients and we are being realistic with them. Otherwise, we're, we're lying to them, and they will never be happy anyway. But, Ebs, I mean, someone comes in and says, I want these these big lips, these Kim Kardashian lips. And you say, or a Kim Kardashian butt, although that's not, I don't think you have enough filler to do that. Um, there are body fillers, but I don't know. Uh, but I agree completely with Dorian. I think it's all about honesty. I think I think that if you promise mm. the client something and then they don't get that, that is where they'll be disappointed. Sure. But if you explain to them carefully that, listen, let's start with a, a, you know, a soft filler, we'll get a bit of a result, but you'll need to come again later and we'll top it up, for instance, that they will accept and they will be happy. But you have to be honest from the very start. I think expectations is something which is, you know, we are taught to deal with expectations, you know, in our training. And I think it's very important. Okay, let's, let's look at expectations for women of all ages or different ages in relation to, relation to beauty. Okay, because we touched on the expectations and I love the fact that you guys are saying that you're honest with your clients. But surely at some point, if you're talking to and we're going to come to younger women as well and, and their expectations because you guys have more pressure on you than ever before with social media. I, I think we as older ladies kind of accepted that that those front covers of Vanity Fair and, and Cosmopolitan <laughs> were always airbrushed. We knew that. But now it's in your face all the time. Yeah. But let's talk about the differences, Debs, because you mentioned older ladies, older ladies and age. More, Ladies are coming to you for older ladies are coming to you for treatments to find fight the 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 passage of time effectively. Mm -hmm. So, what are the biggest challenges for women as they get older? Let's start with getting older, and we'll work backwards. I mean, doing certain treatments is a challenge. It depends on the age. You know, if you get a forty-year-old, there are things which you can do and definitely see a result. You know, um, naturally. And if you get a 60 year old who has never done anything, it's a challenge, you know? And sometimes I tell them from the start, look, um, whatever we do, you're still going to have, have wrinkles, you know? We might improve, let's say, the area around the mouth, the smoker's lines, we could improve that because it's something quite superficial, it can be done. But don't think that we're going to get a, you know, a lift because it's something which needs surgery, it needs more treatment with fillers. 
I mean, you cannot expect to get a, a facelift, you know. So I have to explain that from the start to women of a certain age. Because this, unfortunately, we get sagging, we get loss of fat pads, we get bone resorption. So all these... Oh, okay, because this is what I want to get to. As, as women get older, you mentioned what back there? Fat pads? We lose a lot of fat pads, unfortunately. What's, what's a fat pad? The, we, get a lot, we have a lot of fat pads in our face. And part of aging is that, is, is loss of fat. So that's why we, we get... And then there's gravity, you know, which pulls down. So we get a sagging effect. We get jowls, you know, we get... Also. So we have fat in our faces. Oh, sure, sure. We have, we have different fat beds, superficial and deep. And these, with time, we lose them. We lose collagen, so we lose elasticity, and everything hangs down, like everything else, you know. And we also get resorption of the bone. Certain areas of the skull, you get resorption of the, of the nose part, you know, of the mandibles. So that affects also. We get a problem with our teeth, let's say. If you get a problem, if you have a problem with dentition, it will affect your lips. You know, so certain things, you can't turn back. So there is a limit to what we can do as we age, you know. And then it depends on the age that they start taking, to having treatments done. If a 40-year-old comes, it's easier. But if you get a 60-year-old who has never done anything, it's difficult, you know. So there are things which can be done and things which cannot be done. You have to explain that from the start, I think, to the clients. So literally, as we get older, literally the shape of our mm -hmm. face Changes. changes. If you have you look look at the skull of a 30 year old and the skull of a 70 year old, you see a very big difference in that, you know, that affects that's why we age and then we get muscle expressions and we get wrinkles, you know. So it's all Again, this comes back to this whole idea of expectations. Because if yeah. if even if your skull you mentioned your skull shape changing, then then there has to be a limitation of what you can do without major, major surgery. Yes. Expectations and, and age, what, what are the biggest issues that you find clients are facing as they get older? Well, definitely, as Debs is saying, gravity pulls everything down. So it's also when it comes to the body. So the symmetry of, of our body changes and we get more concerned about tightening and firming not only our face, but also our body in general. So I see that if in our 20s the concern was cellulite, in our 40s and 50s, it's skin tightening and toning and firming in general. But you know, this is something we don't really talk about. Because I think we've mentioned this on the show. We had just in a recent show, we we're talking about fat shaming. We we're talking about the fact that as women get older, we're talking about this about in relation to menopause. Yeah. There's lots. I don't know if you guys are even considering what happens when menopause comes, oh. but there's a whole ton of things that you cannot stem the flow of and I think when we're young and we're in our 20s and our 30s we think yeah yeah it's going to happen a long way away and I don't need to think about it and it will happen when it happens and I, actually you know what I, I felt like I could avoid the whole thing but there are things that happen that you cannot avoid and it's not your fault, fault. we are Wrong. women and as women as we get older certain things happen to our bodies and there's nothing you can I'm do wrong. about it there are some things that we can get help with that's right and there are some things Which that we, we can't. can't. We need to Agree. accept. Mm -hmm. And that, Grace. Dorian, is where the yes. biggest challenge is, I think. Coming back to you, Rowena, because I'm going to talk to you in the context of, of maybe even younger women. What are the biggest challenges that you come across in your side of the industry for women? Um, I think there's a problem because sometimes... Um, on social we on social media we see uh, these products um, that you put uh, you put on your face and uh, the the if you have dark spots for example or large pores will vanish, but these obviously will be edited, and sometimes they come to the shop ask for these products, but obviously we 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 need to explain to the customers that these products doesn't exist they help they help you but it, 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 there isn't any product that do these type of miracles until now no you're exactly right there, there is no miracle there's no miracle cure to anything you right? can do to prevent and help the skin or but you you cannot for example there isn't um, a concealer that um absorbs your wrinkles <laughs> or blemishes. <laughs> so does that mean that expectations of what 
young people and older people are seeing on social media is driving their behavior, their purchasing behavior. How how far is that extending? And, and also, I mean, maybe you're the wrong person to ask, but how has that changed over the fi- last five to 10 years? I mean, are we, is it really expectations are really that high that, that someone will see this product and think that it's going to be a miracle? It's going to... Yes, say, sometimes they they do believe these, these kind of things. Wow. Yes. Also, because if... For example, if I do a Google search for eye cream, um, I go on Facebook and I find the advert of the eye cream. I receive in my email, like, marketing about eye cream. So, obviously, like, it gets you thinking, no? Psychologically, it gets you thinking. Even if you don't need it, but it gets you thinking. And if you go yes. to the shop, do then I you need, st- uh, yes. start connecting, no? Yes, do I need so- it? Uh-huh. <laughs> But this industry is worth 8.8 billion in Europe alone. So there's a lot of products out there. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to throw this question out there. How do we discern between what is good and what is good for us, whether it's a treatment, whether it's lashes, whether it's a a skincare, whether it's a a treatment that you do? How do you discern between what is good, what works and what doesn't? Because it's an 8.8 billion Euro industry, there's got to be a lot of shit out there as well. Exactly, yes, yes. it's one of the fastest growing but, uh, industries. But as Deborah said, you have to trust in the professionals. Yes, that's you cannot, it. You cannot just there, go to there the. Is, there are products which help. For example, retinol. You you do it at night. There is uh, to prevent wrinkles. There is products which helps. So, but no, but you cannot um, like. If you you're doing this product, your your wrinkles are going to re- reduce, but they are not not Don't going to vanish. Or... <laughs> no, you need to see Debs for that. Definitely. <laughs> no, in the sense like exactly. if if I go to a supermarket and I buy my skincare from there, I mean it's just I'm seeing what is on the shelf. But if I go to to my therapist and and I do a facial, she knows what my skin requires. And obviously, if if I need something deeper, it's definitely something that Deborah can do, and not something that can be fixed with an eye cream. Yes. Right. So definitely, we need to trust mm-hmm. in the professionals out there, and we need to ask and seek guidance for everything. Okay. So I saw on a, a, a post recently that someone had gone to have their lashes done. They'd gone to what they believed to be a reputable uh, um, technician. And this technician had actually clumped together their lashes and stuck on a clump of extensions. Now, I'm, I'm being really honest. I get eyelash extensions. I love it. I'm always curious to what they're actually doing, but of course your eyes are closed and then I'm within two minutes I'm snoring and I'm so sorry to anybody who's ever done my lashes because it's embarrassing for both of us. But how then do you know that who you are going to is a reputable technician who's going to do it correctly? Bearing in mind, this is not information that, that someone like myself would know. You go to a technician, you pay your money, you expect that they know what they're talking about. Well, definitely I would ask to see photos of the real work, not photos downloaded from Google. And as you said, unfortunately, these technicians do exist even locally that the clients end up like with with a massive inflamed eyes. And it's like one clamp of lashes. And obviously something to, to take into consideration is timing because to do a full set of lashes and even to do an infill, it takes two hours. So if someone is doing the job for one hour, then you start questioning, there's something wrong. 
because the procedure takes two hours and it takes two hours for a reason because we need to clean the lashes we need to isolate the lashes we need to choose the correct lash to attach to your lash so definitely we need to question and it's something so delicate the eye area we need to really see who we are trusting so yes why not ask for the for the um, therapist work their actual work and do go for a consultation it's important mm -hmm. we're talking about our eyes you know it's not something that we trim a little bit our hair and it grows back you know it's eyes absolutely and we have a, a sliding scale here because if you get the wrong makeup if you've spoken to to a technician or a, a, a makeup we've all had bad makeovers as well yeah. i mean if you have a bad yes. makeover it's a case of getting have it all bad off. allergies as well but it's a case of getting it off and it's going to be a certain amount of yes, lasting damage um, with regards to the eyelashes then of course there's going to be damage and discomfort but it's going to last for a period of time i'm coming to you debs because what you do has a much longer of sure. lasting effects so if i come to you and i'm saying to you I mean, it's really bothering me, this whole thing of, of making sure that you're going to the right person. If I come to, to a technician, not to you, because I know that you do a great job, but if I come to somebody who says that they are um, a, a, you know, a Botox uh, technician or whatever, how do I know? And if they get it wrong, what could the side effects be? I mean, Dorian has just mentioned you could have eye infections, all sorts of things. But in your case, I'm assuming it's a little bit more serious. It is. Um, first of all, in Malta, it's illegal for anyone else but a medical profession to do Botox and fillers. So injectables are only done, should only be done by medical professionals, doctors and dentists. You have to be dentists. a doctor. Yes. So they are being done by people who are not medics, but it is illegal. You know, we have an association and we look into these things, but you know, these things are still happening. The main problem is that if you're not a medic, you would not, because complications happen to everyone. I mean, you know, you are no saints, but at least you, you, ha you have to know how to deal with your complications. And that's the major thing which we see as professionals. So out there, there are people who um, do fillers and Botox, and then they do not know how to deal with a complication if they get it. Um, what are the complications? For instance, um, a filler can result in a vascular occlusion, a VO, which is something serious. It happens rarely, but if it happens, it can be quite and drastic. And what is it? Yes, it's when the filler goes inside the blood vessel, it blocks the blood vessel and you have lack of blood perfusion to that area. It can be serious and it is something which needs immediate treatment. Now we have to have fillers which are which can be dissolved. So that is the, the first thing, the products that are being used. You know, in the market there are loads of products, but we as professionals always recommend fillers which are, you know, have a, are branded and can be dissolved. Um, if they cannot be dissolved, it's a problem. And that you know how to dissolve them. And that's the other thing, you know, how to deal with any complications, you know, the complications can be quite drastic. So, yes, I think a consultation is always key, like Dorian mentioned. Um, you first do a consultation, don't just come for a treatment, you know. I always recommend a consultation because I need to, to speak to the client. We discuss these things, they sign a consent form, they get pictures before and after, you know, that's important for us to keep record. And if there is a complication, we have to know how to deal with it. And we advise the client, listen, if you're getting pain, if you're getting an area which is, does not look, is look, not looking good, it's not looking perfused, then you get back to me. If patients don't know about these things, they will run around with a VO and not even know that they have it. You know what I mean? And what's the worst that can happen with, with Botox? Botox, the worst that can happen is apoptosis of the eyelid. So the eyelid, the Botox goes into the, inside the orbit, goes into the muscle that pulls the eyelid up and you can get ptosis. It's rare, it can happen. It's a To what? be fair, it's quite rare that it happens. But what happens with it? The eyelid drops, so you will not be able to pull mm. the eyelid up. It's reversible though with Botox. There are some eye drops which you, which you can give to the client to help. And to be fair, it's usually worse in the first few weeks to, to months because the Botox and the reversal of the Botox is not sudden so it reverses very slowly gradually over four to six months it's all reversible but you know we have to be all aware of these things that's about injection technique then you have to know where to inject the Botox properly for these things not to happen that's why I always suggest a, a professional yes and we must also mention the people who go to uh, to do the home visits or go to other people's houses so let's not forget that because if we are questioning what is the capability of our technician then we also need to check where we are going if there is the hygiene all the requirements you know if that person is actually trained and able to, to perform that treatment bearing in mind that we can't all be supermodels following on from what you've just said you know we are looking out for more and more ways to improve the way that we look 
but we can't all be everything. You talked about expect expectations. You've talked about people coming to you with photos and saying, I want to look like that. I want to look like this. I want you to fix this. How does a woman decide then which of the ladies around the table is most suitable for them to make the most of themselves? How does a woman decide how to make the most of her looks, bearing in mind that not everything is applicable to every woman? What are the common tricks and what can you do and what would you suggest? And it's going to be different for each of you. And I'm going to, I'm going to come to you last with the, you know, <laughs> the lines on the eye. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I'm going to start with you, Debs. I'm coming back to you because yours is probably the most extreme. So, you know, we can't all look like supermodels, but what would you suggest? And it's going to obviously change between a woman who's 20 years old and a woman who's 60. But what can we do? I think one of the basic things, as I always suggest, is good skincare. You have to start with that. You know, Which good, is what? Good skincare, like and seeing your, what type of skin you have. Probably Dorian would be better, better than me at explaining this. But, you know, if you have dry skin or if you have pigmentation, use products which are good for your... There are loads of, of skin products on the market. She mentioned retinol, you know, it's good in winter to use a retinol in the evening. It helps. It's like a, like a peeling... It has a peeling effect during the night, you know. There are low vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Apply to the face, it gives a bright, it's a brightening agent. So there are loads of things which we can do. A good sunblock, never mm, forget yes. that. You know, those are basic things. Good hydration. Then ideally, we shouldn't smoke, we shouldn't drink, because those are all... And <laughs> <laughs> Let's remove it. <laughs> and they have a negative effect on our skin. So we have to start with, you know, something basic. And then it depends on the age. Like, for instance, if you get a 30-year-old who wants to do something for herself but doesn't want anything much, you can do a skin booster, which is a filler, which is a non-volumizing filler, which is applied inside the skin, injected inside the skin, all over the face. It gives hydration, it gives a plumpy, plumpy appearance, you know, a glow. And it's packed with vitamins and minerals. And I, I always suggest it to the younger generation. And it's a maintenance treatment. You know, nothing, nothing much. It just gives you, a, it makes you look good and healthy, you know. But then if you get a 40-year-old, for instance, I would always suggest starting with a Botox because it removes the, the wrinkles around the eye, so it makes you look rested and quite natural. And then there are, you can step it up, eh? you can start doing a bit of cheek fillers, everything as it should in the right dosage, you know, and the nat natural way, slowly, staging it slowly, depending on the age. So that's, those are my suggestions always. Okay, all right. I'm coming back to that in a second because you said something that really fired me up. But for you, Dorian, what can we do? What can we do? Definitely, I would like to add, like, with proper skincare, um, not just actually purchasing the products, but using them, not adding them to our collection. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a really good point. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes you get tempted and you buy this product. Ah, this looks really good. True. Yeah, but if sometimes you apply Sometimes we buy it, it even because the packaging looks nice. You know, <laughs> just because it's attractive, it's true. No, we need to use proper skincare and sunblock on a daily basis. However, also the importance of um, facials, having regular facials really helps because obviously if, if we keep our skin clean and well-maintained, our pores are clean, you know, everything works in conjunct uh, holistically. So we're getting a facial every six to eight weeks and we're applying the skincare on a daily basis, morning and evening. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking horrified at you because I have never had a facial in my life. <laughs> oh my word, this face! I mean, seriously. No, I haven't. I, I've never had a You're facial. You're missing out. It's, it's a very nice experience. I, I can't even tell you why I've never had a facial, but I'm probably I'm, I'm going to put my hands up here and say that the Avon lady also told me that uh, <laughs> when I was 13 years old and she came to visit, that the skin treatment, uh, treating your skin is cleansing, and moisturizer Rising. and a soap is fine for cleansing oh but, my gosh I'm back then, give I'm me her around. number <laughs> <laughs> no, it was quite a while ago she might not even be around but but you talked about skincare and the reason i'm asking is because i really am one of those wash moisturize and go people and there is nothing else to my skincare routine so what am i missing we need to change as we grow older. We need to change. I mean, this, the, the facial moisturizer that I'm using now cannot be the same one that I used when I was starting. No, fair enough. And know? I would say the same. And I need to add like the eye cream, this, the face serum, you know, these are things that I need to add because I'm getting older. So the needs of my skin change since. But what does mm -hmm. eye cream do? 
well, uh, there are different, different yeah different, different ones. times so you can use Usually, it for patchiness, yes. and dark I, circles and yes, fine lines obviously they don't do magic they will not disappear mm -hmm. You know, but they will help to maintain yes. good skin. See, I'm going to ask you about that. Don't worry, I'm coming to you, so Rowena, fine. because I'm going to ask you about that because I'm one of those skeptics. I'm one of those people that say, really? Do they really work? And I might have bought an eye cream. I do recall buying it or getting a free sample. And I think it was probably a free sample. And not seeing the results by the time I finished the free sample. Well, you need to look at the active ingredients of the product. You know, there are there are different kinds of eye creams available on the market and like with, uh, with choosing the right technician you also need to, to choose the right product for your face for your size skin type you so need to apply it regularly. a professional has to to, to to tell you which which exactly you need and you need to apply it on a daily basis now you also said you've, you've mentioned about looking after your skin you've mentioned facials that i've never had i might have to come and have one of those <laughs> And and lose my facial virginity. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, as a as a woman's just trying to decide what she's gonna do to make the most of herself to 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 look as good as she can. Is there anything else that you would suggest? Because you also we talked about lashes. Are lashes for everyone? Lashes can be adapted for everyone. I think the most important thing is that to to make yourself happy and and then decide what you want to do in the sense if 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 doing lashes once every four weeks makes me feel good then that is therapy for me you know I need to find that that's something that makes me happy that it's like um I'm getting um cuddles from you know how how you know what I mean yeah yeah warm fluffy you know feeling. you know so it's it's love for yourself Okay. You know, you need I to like love that. yourself. That's, that's yes. nice. I, I like that. <laughs> Rowana, I know you've been saying, kind of making noises over here all, all the way through these conversations, <laughs> which is great. But how would you recommend that a woman makes the most of herself? What do you see as some real easy ways of... of... I think, yes, I think she, um, she should focus on, on the most, like on the most beautiful things that she has. For example, I mean, for, for example, she has big lips. I think she, she, she should focus on that. She should focus, even um, during every, she goes for a makeup application. I think she should focus on that. That, that would require a woman to be really self-aware because I would not be able to tell you what my best feature is. Yes, but um, as a makeup artist, you can recommend what what she like for example she have beautiful eyes big eyes so you, so you recommend um a makeup um a makeup look ide ideal for her eyes and then for example with lips you focus on her eyes and then with lips you go a bit less than her eyes so you have to yes balance. yes balance it out and uh, you, as a makeup artist you always have to see the okay. the face of of the the client first <laughs> Interesting, because let me ask you as women, not as, as beauticians, but would you say that you know what your best feature is? Yes. And I think over the years you learn more yes. about yourself as you grow older, you know? I think yes. Yes. Why? Well, you don't, through. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, come point, on. Can, your eyes are really things, nice, are, for example. Are, your yeah, eyes. Yeah, that's true. I, I, well, I, I think you will notice by time, you, for sure, I think. No, if you I haven't noticed by now, there's no <laughs> hope for me. I'm serious. But, it, but okay, let's not use me, but I, would you say that most women know what their best feature is? I'm not... Not always, not always. Not always, but it depends on the type of woman you have, behind, oh, you have in front of you. And I'm not going to embarrass you to ask you to, to, to list your best feature, but you, you know what your best feature is, Dorian. Yes. And I also like to compliment other women that I meet yes. with, with their best feature. No. Yes, this is me. something uh -huh. that we should be talking yes. more of yes. between Absolutely. us. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. But Debs, you, you are aware of your best feature? 
I think with time you learn more about yourself, yes, and what what makes you feel good. As I grow as I grow older, I grow older. Yes, when I was younger, maybe not. Mm-hmm. But then as I grow older, yes, and the more people you see, the more you become aware of yes. yourself and of what looks good, good, what looks good on other the features which are good on other people. You know, the more faces you see, you, the more you learn. Mm-hmm. I think. And you? Yes, I agree with her as well. I mean, by the time you start like being come if you there's some if even there's something that doesn't you doesn't you don't like about yourself for example i don't like my lips but you can do something about them if you don't like them but you do it only for yourself yourself not for others Ooh, we're coming back to that question <laughs> yeah. that was the first question yeah. we'll come back to that in just a second listen i i you mentioned i'm going to stay with you and you mentioned uh right at the, the beginning of the show about what's trending and what fashion in the you know in the makeup industry and the beauty industry is and how long it lasts and you also mentioned about tiktok and social media so with regards to the fact that social media is so prevalent in everybody's life we we all if we were all very honest we're all on instagram we're all i mean i largely forget about tiktok but i'm still there um and we're all looking at media all the time do you find that there's any women that you work with or that come to the store or that you've come across as a marketing manager in beauty in the beauty industry that are hugely compulsive in their pursuit of beauty that you see them and they're they're following every trend and they're following everything and they're coming and buying makeup and they're trying this and they're trying that to a point where it's too much Yes, sometimes there are customers which they are. They always ask, ask for, for example, they ask um, on social media. Um, they ask a lot, like, for example, if a product is is trending, they will ask for it. As soon as it goes trending, they they will uh, ask for it. Um, um, Do you ever? You've just talked about, you know somebody's best features do you ever feel like you would want to turn around to that client and say actually you know what it's trending but it's not really for you yes you you (laughs) can always suggest to them like look i know that this product is trending but this is not um the type of product that is um ideal to you there there is another product which can be more effective to you and it's more appropriate to you so yes but if somebody is compulsive with regards to the way that they look and achieving their goals when it comes to a blush, uh, that's kind of not a big deal. It might, you know, hit their pocket and it might cause them a bit of of financial stress, but it's not going to hurt them too much. And as you said, you might recommend Mm. that, that they try something else. I'm coming around the table because I'm kind of upgrading this conversation as we go. But Dorian, do you have do you ever come across clients that are compulsive, yes. not just with their expectations, but with their desire to come back over and over and over again to, to achieve that yeah. look? And what, okay, if you do, what do you say? Well, how do you respond to that? There is always um, an issue, obviously. So you, you, by the time you create a relationship with, with your client, so you try to to explain and even though they're asking what is the latest product of this collection and I need this and I need that I mean you would see that you know so you need to try and understand and help out as much as possible on a humanly level not not just as a beauty therapist as a salon owner you know you need to understand and maybe guide and maybe let's wait for next month to do this rather than yes 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 I put everything in a bag for you bye bye thank you very much you know There are different ways how to approach this and definitely creating a relationship and dealing with that client privately, not in front of of other people, Mm -hmm. definitely helps. Because these pressures to to achieve perfection are so, so radical right now. I mean, right now, I mean, I don't think it's going to change, but there is that pressure and that does create compulsive behaviour. Yes, but obviously... um, as we were saying, social media doesn't help. And if I see that the cream that is made from snails is tightening my skin, I'm going out and I'm going to buy it. And 
Is right? there a cream that's made from snails? <laughs> you know, there's always yes. like some time this comes up or then it's, it's the, the black charcoal paste that will remove all my blackheads. You know, there is always something flashy, which is superficial just to make uh, some, some money, you know, people come up with. But obviously in the long term, these things do not work. You know? Absolutely. I don't Dedication think Dedication so. and hard work pays off. Well, not magic, not snails. <laughs> um, Deb's coming to you. I mean, you probably see this more apparent than than anybody else, and and probably is more dangerous than anybody else. But do you that have do you have clients that are compulsive, that are addicted, that are, are will do anything to achieve that look? Yes, um, I do get clients, which I sometimes I have to pinpoint it to them directly that is becoming a little bit addictive, and we have to be careful. You know, yeah. because then you get complications out of addictions. Let's say you get lip fillers done and then you, you want an ML and then you want another ML and another ML. I mean, the lip is a closed compartment. You know, if you keep on putting filler in, you get lip filler migration, let's say. So the, the, the filler migrates out into the white lip. You know, it will not look good. So I tell the clients, look, there is a limit to what your lip can take apart from the aesthetic appearance, which will... There's a limit to what a face can take, you know, you can't keep on putting fillers in your yeah. cheeks, you can't go around looking like a hamster, you know, you know what I mean. But it's not only that, it's, it's because they can give rise to complications. So the, I think if you explain that to the clients, they will understand. And then at the end of the day, I'm not a marketing agent, I'm a doctor. So I cannot accept to do whatever the client wants. I have to see no. the long term effect on a client. So yes, I, I, I say that to myself all the time, you know, I'm not here to market. I'm here to give advice. And if I don't think that, that that product is suitable for you or I, if I think that you already have too much, then I have to stop them. But yeah. does every client take that well? Not always. Some, some clients will go to someone else. Ooh. You know? yeah. But at the end of the day, I'd rather they do rather than doing a treatment and not, being, not feeling comfortable myself doing it. And the client is our walking advert. That's yeah. right. They're representing True. us. We, we prioritize this to our staff that we always ask the client um, and we, uh, we see the type of skin type before giving a product, always. So we need to make sure that the, the product is suitable for them. I love what you all just said. You all just said that a client is, a, of course, a, work, a walking very advert. True, very true. Yes. And if somebody's coming out with these big, massive lips or... Or, or whatever that eyebrow thing was that you're talking about you earlier, or, or a treatment or a, a, a product that doesn't work for them, and they mention it's come from you, then obviously it's going to be adverse. I mean, that's the most. Duster. That means you're looking for a long term relationship rather than a short term. That's game. right. They, they do tend to come back, actually. Sometimes if you, if you give the right advice yes. to a client, they might not be happy uh -huh. at the time, but yeah, they will they go home, it. think so about true. it. And they realize that you were right. So I true. think that's what so I believe. True. And they and will tend to come back. They yes. will come back after a time. We do upset clients, but we only mean good, you know. I love talking to you, ladies. I, I'm definitely uh, enlightened today. And I think probably a bunch of our uh, viewers and, and listeners also have been enlightened as well. And I think it's really good to, to talk about expectations and talk about the, the beauty industry. What is your best advice, to close, what is your best advice to any woman in relation to beauty and making the most of themselves. Yeah, I'm I looking think at you. yes. I think we are so influenced with social media that we have we, we need to make some um, uh, like digital detox, and we we focus on our um, on our best parts and the best features in our body. I think we should. I, that's what I recommend. I have never heard that term digital <laughs> detox. detox before. Isn't that cool? It, it makes you so, even just a day, it makes you, you feel much better after. <laughs> that is wisdom from one so young. I mean, I know you're not, but that's amazing, <laughs> amazing advice yes. to have that digital detox and, and walk you should, away. From... You should have, even for some hours. I like that. That I wasn't expecting that. Because sometimes we are so used to always like scrolling and seeing um we all we always see the best the best photo. Oh, and lately we are seeing more um like we are doing we are seeing more beauty campaigns which which are more inclusive, which are we are using more um different body types, even faces. 
we are being more inclusive, but I think we are still. Well, with the, uh, you say that, but also with the, the emergence of AI, it's yes. very, very difficult now to tell what is real and what is not, not even just yes. curated, mm-hmm. but totally True. unachievable because it's not even real. I love that, that digital detox. I was not <laughs> expecting that. Dorian, what's your advice for every woman with regards to beauty? Um, take care of yourself. Yes. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. And make yourself happy and be you, because there is only one of you. Yes. I like that too. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And Debs? I think we should love ourselves. Mm-hmm. We should take care of ourselves. But we should also embrace aging um, to a degree, you know. We have to embrace that. We can't all be perfect. We can't all look like supermodels, you know. But yes, why not take care of ourselves? Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to the very, very first question I'm going to ask you again. Who are we looking beautiful for? Who is the person that we need to impress? I think we always should impress ourselves. Always first. Then, when you feel good about yourself, the rest will, you know. (laughs) Agreed? Definitely. (laughs) Yes. Ladies, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to have a naughty glass of champagne because Deb said that we shouldn't be drinking for our skin, but cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. There you go. Second glass. You see, that was easier than you thought it would be. (laughs)